So a few weeks ago, I went out for drinks with a friend. We played pool, a couple of pinball games, and then she leans over the table and asks me what I thought was a pretty peculiar question. She asked me what my love language was. Now, I've never read the book, and I didn't really know how to respond, so I did what I normally do. I pick up my camera, and I made a picture. <laughs> My name is Quintavious Oliver, and no, I am not here to give you dating advice, though we will get a little bit more personal in this video than we have in the last few. But before we jump into any of that stuff, let me get you guys to go ahead and smash that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Uh, also, make sure you subscribe to my Patreon because uh, it's back up. They finally let me out of Patreon jail. I am so excited about that because that's a really great way to keep this channel going and to allow me to continue to create content for you guys. So if you guys wanna see the photo sets in their entirety from the photographs that I'm gonna be posting in this video, along with the other videos that I've posted in the past, go ahead and check out my Patreon channel. I will leave a link in the description below as well as pin a comment at the very top so you guys will have that link. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about photography. And I say photography, not cameras, not gear. We are not going to talk about this camera right here, my lovely Class W. I will link this video somewhere up there, but if you're here for a gear review, that's not what you're gonna get today. Like I said in my last video, I took a little bit of a vacation, needed to get away for a second and clear my head. Now, unlike a lot of people, when I go on a vacation, I'm not actually doing nothing. Uh, on the contrary, I'm probably doing all the things and most likely making pictures. I find that the best way for me to get to know a new place is to go around and photograph. So, I take my camera, I go to meet people, I hang out in bars, uh, hop on Instagram, start to network, try to figure out what it is that makes wherever I am special. Now, my partner had a job in Jensen, Florida, which I didn't know was the middle of absolute nowhere. Uh, it's very beautiful, very nice secluded beaches, mostly old people, so there wasn't a whole lot to do there. So while she was working at Jensen, I decided to drive down to Fort Lauderdale and Miami and get to know some of the people down there. And what better way to do that than set up a couple of photo shoots? Again, that's kind of become my love language. It's not just what I do for a living, it's not just my hobby, it's how I see the world, it's how I translate what's going on around me. So when my friend asked me what my love language was and I instantly picked up my camera, that's because that really is how I translate love. Now, hear me when I say this, and again, we're gonna get a little bit personal with this one. I knew that I could no longer be married to my ex-wife when I was so hurt by her actions and the way things had gone that I could no longer photograph her. I could no longer pick up my camera and point it at her. And it didn't hit me until later on that that was a very big tell for me. When I am fascinated by something, when I'm curious about something, uh, when I am made uncomfortable or anything like that, I pick up my camera. I want to learn more about it. It's my way of seeing. It's my way of, of rationalizing. It's my way of really making sense of what's going on. Uh, I have to make a picture. If I'm walking down the street, and I see someone wearing something I don't understand or I see something that's intriguing or I wanna know more about someone's rings or the shoes they have on or the scar on their face or arm or something like that, I will ask to make the picture. I will try and figure out a way to get in there and learn more about this person or the situation. Now, on the flip side of that, if I'm in a relationship with someone or I'm in a setting or at a party or something like that and I'm just not interested, I'm not making pictures and thus I have no reason to be there. Chances are if I'm invited to an event or you know there's something going on and I don't see a reason to make a picture there, I'm probably not going to show up. It's probably not something I'm interested in, I probably don't care, uh, simply based on the idea that I don't have an option to make a picture. It's not something where I'm just going to 
uh, pick up my camera and throw it around and you know snap pictures for no reason if I wouldn't print the picture I'm not gonna make the picture I know that might sound a little bit extreme I know this is a hobby for a lot of people and for all intents and purposes this is a glorified hobby for me as well but in saying that it's also to say that this is a part of me it's something I've been doing since I was about six years old so learning how to make pictures didn't just come from learning my aperture my shutter speed my ISO things like that it was really learning how to feel, really learning how to translate emotion. So whenever I meet a new person, whenever I go into a new space, I have to know more. I want to know more. I want to soak up everything I can about that situation, that experience, to be able to translate it effectively as an engaging photograph. And that engaging photograph could just be someone making a silly face. You know, you flip a page, you see that photograph, and it makes you laugh. It makes you feel something. You kind of chuckle to yourself. Or you see another photograph that's kind of hard to look at and you've got to kind of study it for a second or you instantly flip away from it because maybe it triggers something in you. But I feel like the, that's where a good picture comes from. Those are the, the good pictures, the, the effective ones, the ones that actually evoke a response from someone, whether it be an audible response or a physical response. And I feel like any experience worth having, any experience that you throw yourself into should also evoke that response. So again, it's automatic that you make a picture. I found that when I was in Florida for a little bit, and Florida is a bit of a peculiar place. I am not really sure what to call it. I mean, it feels like the Australia of the United States. And not to say that Australia is a bad place, but it's kind of like everything there wants to kill you. Uh, the, the drivers, the alligators, or you know, glorified dinosaurs, or what have you. Uh, everything there is just kind of peculiar. And uh, street photography really wasn't where my head was at. I mean, it was kind of the same thing there that I see here. I can go into any quote unquote hood and photograph the same thing. Most hoods are the same. So it wasn't something I was really interested in doing. I know a couple of people were asking me about what the street photography was like there. It's like it is anywhere else. What I was interested in was getting to know the people. So I took the time to actually go out to a couple of bars, uh, hop on Instagram. I even hopped on Tinder. And uh, you know, a couple of my Tinder dates were just photo shoots for me hanging out and getting to know people, uh, just exploring different parts of different places in Florida that I had never seen before. And of course, I could have gone into these places myself and checked out some touristy spots, but that's not really how I feel like you really get to know a place. Uh, spending time with someone, spending time in places, letting them show you around is I think the most effective way, at least for me, to really get in and dig in and engage with a situation or with a new space. I feel like a lot of people miss that. Again, I don't want to talk about uh, gear or camera settings or things like that. It's really just the idea of being present and being empathetic and learning how to translate not only your own emotions, but someone else's emotions, really taking the time to, to listen and get to know how people are feeling. I really feel like that's something that a lot of people miss. It doesn't matter how big your camera lens is or how much you spent on it, or whether it's a Hasselblad or a Mamiya or a Pentax or a Canon, none of that stuff matters if you're not present and at least somewhat curious about the situation that's going on around you. Anybody can pick up a camera and make a technically good picture, but can you pick up your camera and make something that's sensitive, something that's empathetic, something that's unapologetic or something that's just fun? And I say fun very loosely because of course I can pick up a camera and make pictures of people having fun, but are you having fun? Does the picture feel like fun? Can I smell the food you're eating? Can I hear the laughter? Can I feel the heat or the water or the salt in the air or anything like that? Is there something about that picture that makes me want to engage with it? Or is it just a picture that I scroll past on Instagram, double tap and like? Anyway, just some food for thought. Hope you guys enjoyed the pictures in this video. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and again, make sure you subscribe to my Patreon because that is how I am able to continue making photographs like these. Hope to see you guys next time. Take care, stay safe, stay sane, peace.